Skills Practice 27, Chapter 10, same worksheet, different questions. Now we're on 10-3. We're going to be dividing and simplifying the quotient. Same idea in terms of having polynomial fractions. The only difference here is now we're dividing, and if you remember correctly, when you divide, you actually multiply by the reciprocal. So, if you understood 10-2, 10-3 is only one step away. Let's go back to these simple fractions. Remember these? 3 eighths divided by 15 over 24. Not so simple when you look at it that way, but when you realize that you have division means multiplying by the reciprocal, it starts to fall into place. So you get 3 eighths times 24 over 15, right? Because you flip, reciprocal means to flip the fraction around, put the denominator on the, on the top and the numerator on the bottom. Uh, now we simplify, remember that? I'll do it in red this time. Three goes into 15, how many times? Five times. Eight goes into 24, three times. And we get our answer, which is three fifths, all done. So it was only two steps, all, very similar to what we did in 10-2. When you multiplied fractions, all you had to do was simplify them first. Now you have to multi you have to divide fractions, you have to multiply by the reciprocal. You may have to make that switch first. Once you've made that switch, go ahead and simplify and you're done. Now we're going to move to the harder questions with factoring involved. So in this question right here, x squared plus 6x plus 9. Well, what kind of factoring question is that? Do you recognize the pattern? What's that 9 tell you on the end? What does this 9 tell you? Immediately, if you know your perfect squares, you remember that 9 is a perfect square. It's just automatic. You've got to know your perfect squares. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. 36. 49. 64. 81. 100. 121. 144. 169. You have to know those. 196. Got to know those down. You got to have those absolutely down so that you recognize them immediately. All right, so right here, difference of squares, no, but trinomial square, yes. It's a trinomial that has three terms. The nine tells you it's a perfect square, and the six, the middle term, if you take half of the middle term, half of six is three, three squared is nine, you've got your pattern, it works. So you've got x plus three onto x plus three <coughs> over x plus six. Now, instead of dividing, we're multiplying. So that becomes multiplying. This is x plus three over x, x plus six over x plus three. And everything falls into place, just as like I said it would. X plus 3 is canceled, so does the X plus 6. And you're equal to, uh, final answer is just X plus 3. That's it. I'd box it and put it in the package, send it away. All right, let's do number 30. That was number 24 on your practice sheet. And there's a lot of questions that are very similar. So if you can do that, you should be fine. Let's look at number 30. So number 30 looks complicated. There's a lot of big, uh, big uh, polynomials. But uh, as usual, you'll see it's not going to be too hard as long as you remember factoring. First of all, let's switch it. Let's make the reciprocals to multiply by the reciprocal. So we have to rewrite it. Rewriting it takes a couple seconds, but it's so useful because then everything's clear. So we've got to rewrite x squared plus x minus 6 over x squared minus 4x minus 21. Okay, that took me nine seconds. Uh, times, all right. Let's use the little dot because it might get confused with an x times the reciprocal. So we flip this. This becomes x squared minus 8x plus 7 over x squared minus x uh, minus 2. All right? Now we go ahead and factor. x squared plus 6x. We had one just like this before. The factors of 6 are 6 and 1 and 3 and 2. And do they subtract to be 1? They do. This is plus 3 minus 2. It works out. And we get x plus 3 and x minus 2. So that's for that one. Now, down here, the factors of 21, do they subtract to be 4? Well, let's look at them. 21 and 1, 7 and 3. Oh, right there, it already worked out. 11 and 2, but you want to work through all the factors. 7 minus 3 is equal to 4, and we want negative 4, so we want to have negative 7 plus 3 to equal negative 4, and it works. So watch what happens when we do that. We've got x minus 7, x plus 3, and we're done with that for now. x squared minus 8x plus 7, we want to look at the factors of 7. 7 and 1, do they add to be negative 8? If these are both negative, they do. So we've got x minus 7 and x minus 1. Because negative 7 times negative 1 is equal to positive 7. And when you add negative 7 to negative 1, you get negative 8. There we go. Now, over here, x squared minus x minus 2. Uh, factors of 2 subtract to be 1. Well, there's only two factors of 2, 2 and 1. 
Do they subtract to be negative one? Negative two plus one is equal to negative one, and it works. We've got x minus two and x plus one. And now we can go crazy and cancel because this is now a multiplication. It's easy to cancel with multiplication. We don't have a problem. It's no hangups. Uh, x plus three over x plus three works out. X minus two, x minus two, x minus seven, x minus seven. And what are we left with as our final answer? X minus one over x plus one, x minus one over x plus one. That's our final answer. Put it in a box, package it, send it away. Again, most of this is just factoring. I mean, once you've made that original step at the division sign, you flip it, you change it to a reciprocal, and then you're all the way with your factoring. Factoring really depends on you are recognizing that the different factors, how they combine to give you your middle term. So you really have to have a sense of uh, with positive one, you need it. From six, you're going to have three and two. Your plus three minus two are your factors. That work it out all ahead of time before you even put them into the brackets. You'll be fine. Okay, now we're doing 10-4. 10-4 involves, we're still in skills practice 27. And 10-4 involves adding or subtracting fractions and then simplifying them. We go back to our basic examples of adding fractions. The rule is, now this is a uh, little tricky, we've got to remember the rule is with adding fractions is you have to have the same common denominator. And in this case we don't, but it's easy to make it work so that it, there is a common denominator by going, uh, multiplying by 2 on top and bottom, right here, times 2, times 2, we're going to get 8 over 14. So this becomes 8 over 14 plus 3 over 14. Once we've done that, it becomes easy because all you simply do is add the tops and leave the bottom as it is. Your answer is 11 over 14. So we take the same principles that we learned back in grade 6 or 7 or whatever it was in middle school, and we take them now to adding polynomial fractions. So that's what we, we again, we're going to have to deal with factoring at times, but in this case, these are pretty simple. The first ones, these exercises in 10-4, are actually pretty easy. Why? Because they have the same denominator already. m minus 2, m minus 2, the same denominator, so all you really have to do is add the tops. You've got 4m plus 5 plus 5 minus 3m over m minus 2. Now it's just a question of collecting like terms. 4m plus 5 plus 5 minus 3m. You've got 4m, I'm going to rewrite it just so you know. You can see it all, all right, really clearly. I've got the m's together and I've got the numbers together. And when we take 4m minus 3m, we get m. 5 plus 5 equals 10. So it's m plus 10 over m minus 2. Final answer, we can't simplify it any more than that. Let's move over to number 5, all right? Number 5, same idea. x minus 5y over x plus y plus x plus 7y over x plus y. Our first step is recognizing that these are a common denominator. With this common denominator, we can add the top terms. We've got x minus 5y plus x plus 7y all over x plus y. And collecting like terms is pretty easy. We've got 2x plus 2y on the top over x plus y. Now, you'd think we'd be done, but if you're smart and you, you, your lights are on, you recognize there's a common factor here. And that is a 2, so it's 2 on x plus y over x plus y. And now, you see what happens when you recognize the common factor? These cancel and we're equal, or less, we're, all we're left with is 2. So that's our answer. So that was tricky only because um, you had to, you did all these steps, which is pretty straightforward. You recognize the x plus y was the same, the denominator is the same, so you can go ahead and write it once underneath the fraction. You add the, or collect like terms on top, you collect the numerators together, got your 2x plus 2y, and again, you got to keep your lights on at all times in this. You always got to be looking for your common factor. That's the key. You really have to be good at factoring. You have to practice your factoring. You have to look for your common factors at all times, because that's the key to factoring, looking for your common factor. Because as you did in this one, you recognize 2 came out of it. Divide by 2 on both sides, you get 2 on x plus y x plus y's end up canceling, your final answer is 2. So always look for that simplification process.